Hi, so today we have the T-Audio Legacy 3s. These are one of the more interesting IEMs that we've had in a while because they are a hybrid 2BA one dynamic driver switch based IEM which you can also buy as a custom IEM option and they only retail for like around $130. T-Audio claims to be the to have the cheapest CIM in the world but that's unfortunately not true because Avara has CIMs costing at starting at 60 US dollars uh, during promotional pricing of course I'm not affiliated to Avara but I would like to just point that out now before we get further into the review I would like to just start with the disclaimer and uh, the T audio legacy trees these are Brian's and he bought them second hand from some guy on the internet through the marketplace and we're not affiliated to any brand or any store whatsoever so this review is of my complete own opinion now i'll just start off with a short tldr of what the legacy 3 sounds like and uh, the legacy 3 sounds like an l-shaped iem there's not much emphasis in the mid-range nor is there any emphasis in the treble but there's some slight lift in the bass so I think if you are looking for a relaxed sort of bassy sound signature, I think this will suit you well. Now, although this IEM is a switched based IEM like you could see here, there's two toggles which you can change the sound signature slightly in the bass and treble department. These switches on these only alter the sound signature by a very small margin. Like they don't really matter that much. So uh, to me, it feels rather gimmicky, if anything, to be honest. If they could have removed this and just made one tuning and made it cheaper, I think it would have been better. But some people like this sort of gimmick. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure why. I used to own an LZA4 and the IM, uh, IMR R1s, and those had some sort of different way to change the tunings, but which, which had more impact. But yeah, I, and... I think one of the other downsides with the switch based system here is that uh, these tend to break quite easily compared to their competitors so any filter screw on stuff usually has longer lifetime so putting that aside uh, we'll just go into sound more so the legacy trees starting from the bass department they're slightly lifted both the sub bass and the mid bass there's like uh, they're quite even, there's not much one going over the other. The sub bass slam is quite satisfying, there's not a lot of it, but it's quite satisfying still. Uh, the mid bass kick and punch is, quite, I would say, quite adequate. Um, if you listen to a lot of EDM and such, you might feel like you want more sometimes. I don't really find that longing, except for very bass-like music. Um, but if you're coming from something like the E3000 or E2000s, I think these will probably be not enough. Now, uh, aside from that, the bass speed in the Legacy 3s, I think uh, one of the more, uh, how do you say this, properly tuned. They are quite fast, but not too fast. Uh, I think they don't lose pace as easily as other dynamic driver IEMs. I think this is one of the examples of a good dynamic driver in terms of speed. Uh, texture wise it's not the best I think there would it would be better to just have a bit more texture I think it's even something like the um, well the aforementioned E3000 E2000 have better texture than the legacy trees in the base department but putting that aside uh, there is another thing that I think is quite impressive with the legacy trees is that considering that they're a uh, hybrid configuration IEM once you start getting to the mid-range well, the mid-range here, you don't really feel the transition between the balance armature and the dynamic drivers. And I think that's quite impressive, especially at this price point, where lots of IEMs usually tend to have some sort of issue. And the bass doesn't really bleed into the mid-range at all. Uh, and there might be some slight bleed, which I'm not able to hear most of the time, but some people may be able to perceive. Um, but the uh, transition from the bass to the mid-range of the Legacy 3s is quite well done. And although there's not much bleed at all, there's still quite some body in the lower mids. So male vocals and just uh, more lower tone instruments sound quite weighty. Uh, I would say I would prefer a bit more weight in the lower mid-range, but that's just personal preference. 
I think these do quite a good job. Uh, although mm, male vocals for some very deeper voices, I think might they might still be lacking some weight. Now the mid mid range and the upper mids compared to most of the IEMs that we've reviewed so far, like the SSR, SSP, uh, Starfields, whatever, ha are very de-emphasized. This it's it doesn't really stand out as much, if at all. It stays in line with the rest of the mid range. I think the the, the lower mids, the uh, mid mids, and the upper mids, I think, are mostly in line. There's not much emphasis. This might cause some music to sound quite dead, especially vi um, violence and such. And they might they might sound a bit subdued. They're kind of a, a bit recessed in the mix, but I think that's fine. Uh, yeah, considering that after listening to the Legacy Trees, I think one of the things I realized was that Legacy Trees were sort of more of like like a launching IM. They're more like an IM to chill with. They're not really an IM that you want to force feed music into your ears for. So I think that's I guess a safe option to tune your IEMs. Now um that doesn't mean that the mid range and the legacy trees don't really have their own faults. I think although separation might be quite well, uh, the detail retrieval in the mid range isn't as good as I would hope it to be. I think details in the legacy trees mid range and even in the treble, which we'll get into next, just feel a bit smeared. Uh, I'm not really able to perceive the amount of detail that I usually am able to with other IEMs on the legacy trees. So, yeah. Now we'll go into the trouble section of the Legacy Trees. Now the trouble and the Legacy Trees I think are quite well done. Uh, extension isn't the best. It's above 10 k is... Well, that's not a word for it. it it's, it's mostly just missing. Um, I've heard that the custom IEM versions have better trouble extension, but I don't have one of those, so I'm not able to comment much on that. Uh, the trouble itself I think is also, like the midrange, tuned quite safely. It's de-emphasized. Uh, symbols and such might sound a bit subdued, um, so if you like sibilance and stuff like that, if you were, or rather I would say a more natural quote-unquote representation of what symbols sound like, I think these will sound quite muffled. So let's say you like to listen to a lot of rock and metal or whatever that uses a lot of symbols, I think these will sound very bl um blunted so yeah so uh now we'll st talk about a bit a bit about the sound stage and imaging of the legacy trees oh, sh i skipped over the uh speed and detail retrieval of the trouble i'm sorry so the speed and the detail retrieval of the legacy trees in terms of trouble i think the speed is uh, it's adequate. It's not. It's not the fastest. If you listen to something like Dragon Force and stuff, I, yeah, it'll become a huge mess quite soon. Um, the third triple and the treble also isn't as easy to perceive. I think that's just mostly because of how the how the tuning is. Uh, but even if I when I tried to uh, crank up the volume so I can listen to more of the treble, uh, there wasn't much detail in the treble as I would hope there to be. Okay, I think that now, now now we've covered everything. So we'll go into sound stage and imaging. So sound stage and imaging uh, on the legacy trees. Let me just pull up my gra my my graph thingy, which I've I I I lost it. Okay, so we we'll have to use my hands for now. So the legacy trees sound stage. If this were my head. The Legacy 3 sound stage are just inside your head, ever so slightly. They don't really ever feel out going outside your head. It's a more closed-in sort of sound signature. I think that might have been uh, something to do with how the treble is tuned. And uh, imaging, I think, is quite well. It's it's not the best, definitely. I can only be a I'm only able to perceive instruments with an accuracy of about like 45-ish degrees. So I can only get like a more general-ish direction. Um, Soundstage also for me feels a bit odd in the Legacy Trees, although I say that it goes around your head somewhat, but it feels more like it's... There's more information going for the front 
and the left like front left front right then there is on the right and left direct right or left side of the IEMs I haven't found a particular term to describe this sort of sound stage so bear with me um, but to me it just sounds like the legacy trees are a bit they sound like a bit more forward in from your uh, from the usual IEMs that are there so if for example this were here where or how I am other IEMs would sound like the legacy trees just sound a bit more forward to me for some reason it's 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 not that much I don't think you'll find it too odd but it's just something that I picked up when listening to the legacy trees so we'll now talk about the build quality and the accessories provided in the legacy trees so the legacy trees I think uh, at least the universal version uh, I'm they're made of some sort of like resin, I believe, and they have these well switches, which, as again I mentioned earlier in the review, I would suggest that you stick with just well just one tuning that you might like, or actually, and then don't just switch around these switches. Get it? So because these switches these tiny switches tend to break quite easily um they're not that very they're not durable and i if you're looking for a do it all one iem to end it all it, it this, this won't be it these will not be able to provide you with all those sound signatures that you want unfortunately now uh, in terms of the shell itself i think the shell uh, of the legacy trees are quite normal sized at least for me, these seem to be normal, well, CIM, pseudo CIM shape IEMs. They are quite comfortable in my ears. Uh, I don't have any issues. If anything, these actually feel really nice in my ears and they're quite light. They're not, they're not too heavy. I don't remember the exact weight of the Legacy trees, but I believe that the ears are actually quite light. Now, in terms of the nozzle, the nozzle of the Legacy trees, I think, are one of the... Uh, they don't really have they don't really have a lip for your ear tips to stay on oh camera please focus doesn't really have a lip for the ear tips to stay on so if you use the looser ear tips like let's say the spin fit line of ear tips let me see if i have one of those here i do if you use a spin fit line of ear tips i think they can they, they, they fall off very easily these are the CP145s and they fall off in the Legacy 3s very easily. Uh, if you want to still use the spin fits, for example, on the Legacy 3s, I would suggest you just use some very thin uh, double-sided tape in order to make them stay in place. Because otherwise you'll have ear tips stuck in your ears, which is not a fun experience to have. Uh, going with the provided ear tips though, uh, I think they are they, they just fit okay-ish. They don't really fall off that easily. So if you want secure ear tips just use the one that you get uh, and now in terms of cable uh, I, I'm, I don't know really what to feel about the cable the cable aren't as microphonic I think these are like the more generic chi-fi cables that we can see uh, these are 8 braid cables they're quite supple I have like a few dozen meters of these cables that I bought from AliExpress uh, just as a raw cable so I've I've been quite familiar with these sort of cables. Uh, the jack I think is quite hefty, it's quite nice, but it's a straight jack, which for an IEM I don't like. If you, if you want to have a portable sort of thing, sort of device, I want an angle jack. I don't want a straight jack. I don't want my phone to just dangle and then just break out my headphone jack. But that's just personal preference. The quality of the jack seems to be quite well. The uh, the coating of the this gold coating hasn't worn off so far, and uh, the now this 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 part, the splitter and the chin slider, I think is it's it's quite hefty. I mean, I'm not a big fan of very hefty chin sliders and splitters because they just dangle around your neck like some sort of accessory that a rap rapper would use, which I'm not I mean I'm not a big fan of. They're quite weighty, but at, at, but at least the chin slider works properly. It stays in place when it has to. So uh, if you use the chin sliders properly, and then because of the shape of these uh, of these IEMs that are over ears, 
you will have very less microphonics and that's that's a good thing so when you're walking around you don't really hear the sound of the cable that much now uh accessories wise this is probably one of the complaints sort of that i have with the legacy trees the accessories in the legacy trees are lackluster if if I'm gonna be honest, and the packaging, like, you, you look at the packaging, it's, it's massive, like, it's, it's, it's like, this big, it's, it's, it's bloody massive, I don't know, if, uh, hold on, if I just pull out a packaging from the KZ series, it's, it's like, this, this big, it's, in comparison, it's, it's massive, like, I don't know why it's this big, and then, well, at first I didn't know why it was this big, and then I opened it up, and voila, you have like a fake leather, supposedly, case, that's just the size of like, I don't know what you, I, I, I bought an IEM, I didn't want to buy a wallet, I mean, I don't know, what do you need such a big case for, like, I don't understand, I, I, I bought an IEM, not a wallet, and this 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 box seems to be made for the case, not for the IEM. Uh, if uh, if they could remove this case, if they could, uh, probably just provide me with a smaller, nicer case, probably like one of those waterproof, like one of these, or like one of these, and then just make the packaging overall smaller and probably cut the price. I think I would prefer that because, anyways, these cases aren't particularly helpful because they're not uh, waterproof or anything. So. You'll still cock up your IEMs if you don't use them, uh, if you don't store them properly. And aside from that, because I assume the whole budget for the accessories went to the case, you don't really get a lot of ear tips. You only get three pairs of ear tips: small, medium, and large. And that's and that, that's all the accessories that you get. You don't get anything else. You don't get any. I don't think you, you even got any paperwork. Uh, but I think that's. Probably just because we bought the second hand, but I, I I don't know, but you don't get any. I have no idea what else you're supposed to get. Probably foam ear tips. Additional ear tips would be nice. I would say, especially considering how slippery the nozzle is. I don't want to have a guesswork in order to sh know which uh, ear tips might fit the legacy trees. If they gave us some more ear tips to test, try out with. I think that would be fine. Yeah, I, uh, it's 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 too much. It's 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 just not a good budget allocation, I would say, in terms of like what could be provided, what could have been provided. But uh, I don't know how the audio does the packaging department or whatever. So I think that's uh, that's mostly just a nitpick of mine. I uh, I'm not a fan of big packages. that are unnecessary if they're necessary for something like the let's say the high and Anandans or the hd 800 then i'm fine with it if, if now uh now i'll just do some slight comparisons for the legacy trees now the legacy trees are being sold at 130 ish us dollars and i think the only real competitor in the price range to me is the uh, moondrop starfields i think these those are probably the only iems that i consider to give the legacy trees a run for the money because these starfields for me are still a benchmark in this price range in the 100 ish us dollar price range and the legacy trees are a bit more expensive than that um these starfields are tuned quite differently they are more of a harman tuned iem um so they have emphasized sub bass, mid bass, and upper mids, and the tra there's more trouble in, in comparison to uh, towards the legacy trees. Now the star fields in general, I think they are overall more resolving. They have better detail. They have better texture in the bass. There's uh, quite more detail in the mid range and the treble. I would say overall technicalities, the star fields just win outright. Uh, my personal preference in terms of sound signature would fall into the Starfields. I prefer the Starfields sound signature a lot more. Although I sometimes want a less aggressive upper mid in the Starfields, but I think most of the time that's fine when I'm listening to the Starfields. I don't really notice it as much. The Legacy Trees, I think, are quite a different sort of tuning. They are 
L-shaped, the emphasize there's way less upper mids than uh, what I would want to reduce from the star fields. The base, I think there's uh, there's less sub base compared to the star fields. Um, although the star fields sub base, you don't really feel as much as the legacy trees, I would say. Now, uh, in terms of overall speed, I think the speed of the base of the legacy trees, I think, are slightly so faster than the star fields. And I think even the uh, base bleed of the legacy trees, I think, are better controlled compared to the star fields, surprisingly, considering that the star fields are only a one dynamic driver IEM. Now, the mid range, I think, is probably one of the more dividing factors. I like the mid range of the star field a bit more because of because there's just a bit more excitement. The legacy trees, to me, just sound a bit too dead. Although I just understand that the purpose of the legacy tree seems to be quite different compared to the star fields but i just i'm just putting that out uh same goes for the treble i think the treble is more exciting on the star fields and i think there's just plainly just more detail and stuff also there's also better extension of the star fields um although if i do want to listen to a launching sort of IEM, if i just want to chill with music i would still get the legacy legacy trees rather than the star fields but uh, the legacy trees, I think most of the time, they just don't bring much enjoyment to me. They are mostly like a background music sort of IEM that I would use. I don't really think of them the first IEM that I would want to use when I want to listen to music. Now, in terms of comfort and build quality, I think they're quite on, on par with the Starfields. Uh, the Starfields have less isolation compared to legacy trees. The legacy trees have way better isolation. They are also lighter than the Starfields, so they're quite more comfortable in the long-term usage, I would say. So, I think that wraps it up. Uh, I think that I think I've gone through most of the things I want to go through with, with the legacy trees. So, if you like this video, like it. If you want more content like this, subscribe and leave a comment of what you think. I'll leave what Brian thinks right about now, and well, I'll see you next time. Bye.